Hi, in Autodesk 3D Studio Max Elementary course, today's lecture, we're going to have Unit 2, Lecture 6, and we're going to make uh, the Emirate Towers, which is a very nice uh, building here in United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai, and it's very simplified copy of that tower, it's not a detailed copy of it. So I'm going to try to teach you generally how to sketch uh, a general form close to that. I know that the plan is based on a, a triangular shape and the existence of a curve and I'm not gonna go that far. I just want to, to show you my student the ability to cut that face and uh, use the edit poly for example to make this with the probullions and uh, how to make some of those uh, you know joints again it's a rough modeling it's not a detailed modeling I can go ahead and um, if you like in a further uh, tutorial to make the exact copy of that geometry uh, but for now I'm, I'm more focusing on using this uh, tutorial which is actually a 3d studio max main help and the tutorial file I'm just changing a little bit of it uh, adding some picture and make it fix as a slide for you, I just want to practice in this uh, the ability to use it poly and pro boolean that we studied in a previous lecture here in Ajman University. So again, I'm gonna start with a normal box, and uh, before I jump, of course, you have to make sure that you fix your uh, your units and make them to meters. And this box is basically 30, 30, and then uh, 200 with a one-off segments and then you gotta uh, you gotta just move that box into the zero zero um, let's do that and ah, we're here also we have to name it as a tower so later on we can understand that this is our main uh, building so let's do this so I'm gonna jump uh, here to max and in max I'm gonna create a box and that's the box it, we said uh, to here that's my mistake I didn't fix the units so I'm gonna cancel undo quickly customize a uh, unit setup and then go meter and then system and then meter I highly advise you if you draw something it's just not a big deal if you go to file and reset it better than you know uh, just fix the unit during the work I don't recommend that by the way anyway box uh, now meter so let's go 30, 30, 200 and this is our guy just uh, push it and put it in the zero, 0, as a location now that's my box easy probably an a 4 to see the edges now I'm, I will go and create another smaller box here and I will call this guy level 001 while this guy I can call it main tower so actually naming is very important because it's gonna protect you later on when you do the pro boolean and helps you to know where is the original what each part of this model is so if I go back here uh, this guy, this the small box, that it should it's gonna represent the glass part of the of the each level. It should be 35, 35, and three, and then you have uh, in the slide you have to align that to the main object, and then align it again based on x minimum by uh, minimum, uh, and then we have to raise it 40 meter uh, vertically in the z axis, and that will help us to to get into this results and place it in the correct location so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select that guy and then go to align and then select the target and you know XYZ pivot pivot we said that in the previous lecture this is step is to place it exactly in the correct place if I hit apply uh, I hate that you can't zoom in while the thing you know uh, not like the array and now again and instead I'll make it just X and then maximum by maximum and when you hit OK now you gotta see that you just uh, you make that side flush while the rest is actually uh, protruding in it and I'm gonna push that vertically uh, let's say 40 meter 
and as you can see it's placed correctly and only I need to see that it should be pushed that way in the in the minus X and I need to know how much exactly which is somewhere should be written here somewhere and I cannot see it anyway mm. anyway uh, I don't see it for some reason but anyway I'll just push it that way let's say uh, 8 or 10 meter so I want it to be that way so when I cut it it doesn't make an entire hole in the level I just need to keep that side solid so I'm gonna push it that way let's go minus X let's go minus uh, 10 maybe mm, no too much I'm gonna push it too again too much three I think that's enough so totally a uh, minus five and the box itself uh, this guy I will make sure that uh, the height of it at least three the rest of this is not really important you can go ahead and, and follow the example exactly in this piece I think it was uh, 35 by 35 if you want to make it you know and exact and that will mess the whole thing that we've done oh God. so I'm gonna hit that and align it to XYZ and it's okay now and then I'm gonna push it 5 that way now I'm gonna select this guy and go to tool and then array and then I will make a 16 copy of it it's a linear array, one dimensional linear array, and the height of that is six between each each copy. So I'm gonna make those glasses for those levels. And that's what I want technically. So now the lovely thing is when you go to the last one, it's already been automatically named 16, 15, 14. That's the power of naming that I always encouraging you to do. Because it's gonna help you to, you know, have an automatic naming process in Max. So, am I right? Let's have a look for the slide. Yes, it's 6 and it's 16. Beautiful so far. And I will choose the last one here. And I will just make the height 30. And then I will make the Pro Boolean and cut the whole of those using the Edge uh, shortcut, which is the Select by Name. And remove them, removing those boxes from the main object to get to this result it's a very easy process so first I have to select that guy and I have to increase its height to 30 and when you do you notice that the entire universe here is messed and that's okay and that's happened due to the fact that those guys uh, are actually uh, an, an instance copy and if you you didn't notice what I've done. You remember when I go to align and you know when I go quickly 166 and kept this to the default. And actually, Max is trying to give me a hint here, telling me that this is an instance. That means they are an identical copy. That affect this guy, you're going to affect any one of those. So in order to break this relationship, just press on this. That's it. Happy life. And this guy will be you know renegading against all of those. And you just need to go this and make it 30. Now you're happy and the shape is happy. Everyone is happy. Select this guy. And in the create, just go and compound it and then pro boolean it here. Make sure it's going to be removed or moved and make it subtraction. You're seeing the results. So I'm going to start picking and then, you know, I can go click one by one and as you can see it's gonna remove the whole thing one by one but you know it's not really a good thing to be done these days it's, everything is so fast so just hit edge <coughs> sorry and with edge you're gonna have select by name or pick objects use uh, to click on the first one and then continuously press on the shaft on your keyboard and then select the last one and that's allow you to select everything and then pick once and they're gonna be removed so yes it's really powerful method if you have hundred or more than hundred even boxes to be cut from the same object it's really beautiful method
as you can see with one click to be removed now I'm gonna right click to cancel that and this is basically the geometry that I wanted to make so far now you can now I will try to make the glass and uh, and also to make this box actually exactly like this the upper one only you know less less uh, depth you know so I should push that nine uh, meter in the other way of minus X here so there is lots of methods some people use the operand show method so if you go to here and you go to modify uh, I believe here you, you can see the result or you can see the operands so both whatever you want if you are familiarized to work with the sub object modeling techniques this is so far it was object modeling and why you say object modeling techniques is when you move this guy and that's it it's move but the sub object modeling is when you try to change a point or a face only it could be goes now for this probe boolean because all those boxes removed is actually are uh, is actually sorry a sub object so if you move that object now while it's still cut it isn't on uh, an, a modification or modeling based on object level it's based on a sub object modeling so if you need to see down the sub object operands or sub object modeling you're gonna hit this guy and you're gonna see them they still exist but they are in the mode of cut some people provide, pro, pro, prefer to select the operand and then go open this pro boolean and select this and then select that guy again so if you move now if you move now you see that the object itself is being moved and that's a little bit scary so I'm gonna hit undo and then undo again so why this guy moved let's see because you're selecting it here that's the union main tower that's the powerful and the beauty of naming things so when you move something and it's shock you with it you was expecting that you selected this guy like I did now and when you move you move this guy I know you because you pick this and you click on it but again you see the default selected was that so how I know which is that which of those is just the naming again it's the last one so it should be the 16 and you can't also identify it by the triage or the the gizmo or the pivot here it jumped up and now if you move you know it's moving and the lovely thing is you know that you move this you didn't move it as an operand as solid you just actually seeing it as an operand if you go back to the end up result you're gonna see that's been cut you know so that's a, that's the technique if, if you really want to see the objects that you removed for example you have the power to do that and we call that sub object again or you just keep it the result and then you know that's the end up result of the geometry which is the subtraction choose the right geometry and make sure that you select this guy if you don't select this guy and you don't select here you're gonna be a mess and you know so again that's my object my sub object selected and I need to push it that way uh, I can't remember how much I think it's nine yep nine my memory still alive which is good so just push that minus nine and your life will be happy see it's been moved this distance now bigger and that's what I want it will be too scary you know if you cut all that out so that's enough for it that's what I want and that's good so I can stop so far and again turn that off and I'll go back to the slide to try here to model a really big box 25 25 by 87 uh, whatever and then center it in the middle with the use of fuse align and then uh, actually it just try to make this a glass a glassy box here and to sit it in the middle but I'm wondering in this technique used in I think by I think it's the basic default here used by those uh, tutorial uh, so just say to create a box and you know add the Z of 40 good well, 25 25 and 87 so it's just one geometry 
So I'm gonna go and make a box wherever I want. And while we talk about the bluish material or bluish thing, it's a good idea to change this guy into whatever, you know, white. Because this guy, we want him to be blue, so I'm gonna keep the default. So these two colors, that means it's default. Auto assigning color. That's uh, usually Max give automatically color for everything he wants. 25, 25, and I don't know why it's 87, but anyway, I'm gonna be a good boy and listen, so changing this to 0, 0, and then push it to be 40. So it's obviously been designed as a box to be placed exactly in this location, which is can be useful for you if you like, uh, you know, uh, recalculating the whole thing and place it again. So it, it doesn't take a much time out of you, but anyway, that's a way. So you can do it that way. So I'm going to hit undo and I'm going to delete. There's another way for that, by the way, and I like to show it to you. And it's again, it can be, it is actually a sub object uh, modification. So uh, I'm going to go here and just go down, down, down. I'm going to select the first to the 15th with the shift. Oops, it doesn't, it did actually, good. So I'm not including 16 because I don't want to make a copy of it. And then easily, if you navigate here, you, you, you have something, sub-object operations. You can remove those guys, instance those guys, or copy those guys. So copy, again, is different from instance as this is the copies, the new one that I used to cut those voids from. Uh, will affect nothing out of those voids because copy is mean no relationship in the copying process and that's the other way around of anything so you just hit copy and then you just uh, go extract selected and you're gonna get back your old boxes you know a copy of them turn off this and your life is happy now just select those guys oops undo turn off that oops what happened right click I'm stuck all right for some reason it doesn't want to turn off everything so anything I do click uh-huh I'm still in the boolean that's scary hmm I don't like that yep now it's okay I think what I've done is I was jumping crazily here so when you're here you're not allowed to go out good if you go up and you close this thing and then you click you are allowed to go out okay now I learned something now those dudes here select them all like this you know that as long as this is a crossing if you even select a little bit of the geometry like I did it's gonna select the entire geometry while well, this guy doesn't have any intersection with the with the with the crossing that I did, so it isn't it hasn't been selected. Now, one of the most hideous command that I don't like and I don't encourage you to use at all, which is the use of scale. So I'm gonna go here and select that guy, and let's see. So if I change, I'm gonna do that roughly, and which one? This one. Is that scale? No, it's not even the scale. Okay, so it's this one. Sorry, my bad. So if I go to the X and let me change this by 80% or actually 70% and then I'll change this by 70%. I'm not affecting the overall because I want the height to be the same. So that's, I think, it. So if you look from the side, it's look good if you want to keep this distances balcony if you don't you can just jump ahead and instead of 70 you can add 80 oops not here I'll return this to 70 I can just put the 80 here you know it's a little bit bigger maybe 75 will be good and this you know the gap I'll just go to move and that's my X and I don't know how much the distance so I'm gonna push two by two or three by three or one by one so that's a two 
And I think that's a three. And that's it. We get our set back, as you can see, uh, nice and neat. If you want to make this as a smaller, again, come here. And I think this 75, you can make, oops, uh, 75 it here. And then push that a little bit again with the use of move, because that's a move. That's not the scale, so you have to push here 75. And then push the move that way and so on. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the other way of doing this setback without making that a different box. Maybe you want to add a different material for each one or then, I don't know, maybe distort with the scale each one of them if you want to later on uh, change the design. That gives you more options, by the way, or more flexibility in the model. Now, uh, that's the, technically what I want. Now I'm going to make uh, a new geometry which is a box here which is uh, 50 18 by 36 so 50 18 by 36 so a box and again it's 50 and then 18 by 36 and in here I'm gonna pick a line and align it to this based on X Y Z pivot to pivot and hit apply and that's it now I'm gonna select it in place by hitting control V copy and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degree so I end up by having two boxes like that see now uh, in the main tutorial I or actually the tutorial I think it's been made by Autodesk again here that's the reference so uh, control V and then paste it in place and then rotate it 90 degree and then just boolean it like once and then in the sub object modification I'm just pushing that guy which is this one uh, 16 uh, meter that way which you can do when we just exercise now let me do it in the other way to show you more tools here so I want this face to be faced with that face, you know, like pushing that to be with this. So I'll select this because it's the one who's going to move. And I'm going to select a line. I'm going to select this guy. And trust me, I don't remember which is which. And I don't care to look. And I just did X. And I go maximum by maximum. So this is not the axis that I want. So I'm going to go no, Y, and then maximum by maximum. And yes, that's the face now, look, with this guy. So if you hit OK, and still you don't believe, it's OK. Just select this guy, and then select this guy, and then right click. And then go, you want to isolate or unhide, or sorry, hide unselected, you know, like this. So you, you see that this face now is with this, and everyone is happy. So unhide all. And let's do the magic. Let's do the pro boolean. Let's cut that. Oops, actually, you know, I did wrong. Like, uh, it shouldn't do like that. Sorry. It should be the other way. So undo, 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 like this. So that's the one. And align. And I'm going to select this guy. And yes, it was X from the beginning. Yep. So now, if I want to cut those boxes out of that geometry I don't need to select it and then go add pro boolean I kept repeating this in the lecture in the university guys and I told you don't add more than one pro boolean it's not a boolean so don't go even to the create that's the power of the pro boolean just select it and go to modify and then start picking that's all you need and then you select this guy and it's been cut and select this guy and it's been cut so that's what I want, that's the shape, it's a 3 opening and the force, I block it when I push it that way, the, the subtracted element. So that's it, that's another way of making it actually. So that's the shape so far, I'm going to turn off that, or deselecting it, getting back to the slides and then it's asked me to create a cylinder uh, by the use of auto grid 30, 13, sorry, by 30, 8 and then 20, let's do this. And it can be done easily. It's actually you need to go to create and then standard and then cylinder. Use the auto grid. It allows us to create things on that face or that face or any face here. 
I'll make it here like this and it said it's 13 and it's 30 of course the height and the segment uh, have no idea no height segments being specified actually there is 8 by 20 for the side so the side 20 and the height is 8 and then we have to align it both in X and Y good I don't need to do the Z because I already used the auto grid so the height is perfect X Y and this one to this one and hit OK now everyone is happy again uh, now uh, you can go ahead and slice it and because here the tutorial uh, I don't think it's a slice it's immediately change it to the auto grid I will slice it I don't know why uh, let's select that I don't want this extra if you're gonna get F3 extra form getting inside that so I'm gonna slice it nothing to lose so let's see 0 by 180 you know like that beautiful and just rotate it 90 degree or just pay more attention just make this I think 90 by 270 uh-oh so 270 by 90 yep that's it you know like that ah, a gap lovely so can we push that let's push it one by one maybe one yep happy life and that's it so now we are technically gonna open we're gonna change this into uh, converting it into edit poly so now it's an edit poly structure and I'm gonna use the edge and then uh, you know to I'm gonna use the isolate command to get rid of the whole geometry and keep this one and then gonna create a loop of those segments and then use the chamfer with about of 0.6 to open those one edge and make them two edges which allow us later on you know to make them higher or lower and add different material to them and whatever you want so we should have end up by having this result actually uh, you can use the bevel command or the tool command extrude command sorry and you should end up by having this result all right so again uh, let's go back to where we are which is this case so far so in the main tutorial uh, it's just been selecting this guy and then right to click isolate it so I'm gonna delete it's actually not delete it's just hiding everything except it that's the that's again what we explained before that's the edit poly now you see when you go to modify there is no radius and nothing because we change it into editable poly and the lovely thing here it's again it's been made of points which is this guy and you can change them or edge which is this line between to vertex and the border which is actually when you open this that's the border of it and the polygon which is the entire surface or face that's been created between those four edges and the finally the element which is the overall thing I did explain that in earlier lecture anyway here I'm going to use edge and I'm going to use the chamfer command so let's, if you know if you don't know what chamfer actually I'm going to hit control on having both those two things selected, those two edges, and then chamfer them, you know, randomly like that. That's the chamfer as we, you know, more familiarize with the, or talk with it with the AutoCAD. Uh, but today, I'm not going to use it on an edged surface. Today, I'm going to use it on this edge, which is within two surfaces. So it's not a corner like this. This guy is between two edges, vertical angle between them. So, you know, like... I know there's an edge in a face here, a polygon here, and a polygon here, but the, the difference in this case, those are a continuous or located in the same angle while this is having a 90 degree angle. So the chamfer will chop between them with a 45 or whatever angle. So, how are you going to do that? And yes, you can just, you know, like go try horizontally as much as you can or go click here. And then you can select this guy crossing to make it window and you go like this, you know. You select the whole line like this with control you can or you can select this line one of them 
only, even without the need to chamfer first, just this guy. And then, and again with control, this guy, this guy, this guy, and so on. I'm gonna keep, you know, the upper and the lower. And you hit loop once, and your life will be very happy. You know, like it gonna goes around it and select it for you. Now, instead of doing that, you know, without dimension, just hit this box, chamfer setting. And let's go here and make it 0.6, and we hit OK. Oops, and we hit this. Okay, undo. Actually, that's it. So you know, I'm stuck again. It should be. Wait, 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 wait. It should be goes here, chamfer, and I'll add. I'll add here the number that I want, which is 0.6, and that's it. Finish. And now it's it's been pushed 0.6 or chamfered 0.6 in the same in the same surface or in the same polygon, so it doesn't create it any any angle between them. And all I've done is selecting here and adding this number here, this number. Sorry. So now that's what I want. So now I can go easily to the polygon, and I can uh, you know navigate through this and easily I can go with this polygon and select this guy when with control select the rest as such and you see that the use of isolate is actually helping us to you know removing everything else from the view so you don't need to be bothering about so you can use uh, you can use undo for the last step that's it now I select those, oops, some extra faces. I'm using Alt and then Control to add them. And I think I need to Alt those. Really. Now, that's the second method that I told you about. And now you can go ahead and use Extrude, for example, and you can go ahead and, you know, like get this result. But if I use here the extrude with the setting here, I can just go ahead and change this into local, and that will help me, you know, extruding this based on their own center. And I think minus two is too much, so I'm gonna make minus maybe one meter. Let me see, yeah, better. And I hit finish, and that's my result now beautiful some some distortion happened because I forgot and I selected those objects so you know like you can alt them back and control them here and you know do the same thing you can do bevel by the way I think it's uh, having the same effect except it can be make it actually inclined so uh, let go minus one and then minus point one oops oops minus something less than that I hate that so let's make it uh, two you see now it's chamfering it it's making it you know like the extrude but with an angle which is on 0 0.2 and overall of that so if you make it over 0.3 see if you like this sci-fi shapes you know uh, it's gonna be you know your own option anyway that's a different but while well, extrude make it you know like with the edge 90 degree like 90 degree 90 degree that's the, the difference between two anyway finish this lovely to use this uh, bevel with setting or extrude with setting and now you can just go ahead and right click and I uh, you know unhide all and I can go here don't forget to turn off this guy and that's it that's uh, that's what I wanted to do actually in here I can just uh, go ahead and uh, look at the slides anyway um, that's what the slide did technically probably with a little of uh, different dimension now I'm, I'm, I'm copying this cylinder from the top part and putting it down. Then 
I'm gonna select that face and then push it up and uh, I think it's uh, how much uh, 20 or 30 uh, place it on the Z then edit poly and then uh, move it 6 meter okay so that's a copy in place control V copy and then uh, with the move I'm gonna change the height into zero and then zooming in and picking the upper face and then to be moved by extra six to be faced and you can go ahead and do the same regime here and copy that or whatever which I'm not gonna do anyway so okay now you need to push that back that's what we need to do so let's push it like a three another three oops, oops another three another three anyway so now you can go ahead and select that guy now and that guy you can right click on it and change it to editable poly and by that we're gonna kill all the you know uh, all the boolean process that we've done and we change the structure or the type of modeling from compound modeling which is a pro boolean into edit poly or we can select that guy and go add edit poly modifier which is uh, almost the same thing that we get but this guy is heavier on the machine if we compare to the other method because the other this guy is actually keeping both method together and the same thing it also allows with a little bit of more things to be done here anyway I'm not gonna do that so I'm just gonna go undo and right click convert to editable poly just consider is it really important to keep the pro boolean existed and that's you can keep it uh, you can do the edit poly by adding edit poly if it's not just change it as I did now so I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna select that edge and I'm gonna change the height only of this so this and this now 200 obviously and that's why they are straight I'm gonna change only this 260 see how you can make this inclined roof easily and that's what the slides here can show you also by changing this guy down and now it's to the lower part of it now I'm gonna select that face you know and then make inset to it and which allow us to make a similar offset value of a 2 and then I'm gonna push it down so let's first make it uh, make an inset here so I'm gonna get go here and select that face zoom in just a face and if you push down it's an inset and just give it actually the value to 1 just make it 2 and see what it did really powerful it helped you to make frames windows you know out of the same distance and then you select the edges and make them smaller or bigger or whatever now let's choose from all sides you can just select this edge and this edge and make scale for them in this axis the z and they're gonna get you know like gonna be you know the distance here and here smaller than in the other axis and probably that's what you want now I will push that down and have an, an exit route. Uh, so I'm going to exit route that minus 2. And when I do, I notice that that face is lovely and beautiful, but it's, you know, like, you know, protrude from the other side. It's, moving, it's just showing from the other side, and I don't want that. So, in order to see this kind of catastrophe, see here? it's outside so easy to fix just select this you know now what is really not easy to fix is this you know like you see how uh, the move is all the place I'm just close it so you see this guy he's X and Y and the X is that way and the Y that way and I need to move that thing that way you know like better than move X Y X Y and you know by your eyes uh, so, so here boys you can just uh, come here and just do a local you see now that the, the pivot is now aligned with the surface itself so I can just move that you know the amount I want or just you know like this see how easy it is and instead of moving X and Y or two of them try to fix this issue now it's been fixed and now if you go to the 3d everyone is happy yeah, as long as you are watching here everyone is happy see 
That's that's what we need. It doesn't protrude from this side, and it's working perfectly from the other side. Uh, I think uh, that's it. You know, I, I'm just trying to show you the major techniques you can use. I know you can go ahead and open those things and you know cut a little bit of a box and add a curve and make it more look like the building itself. But I'm really here just to show you how to practice edit poly and pro boolean and understand the idea because both of them both of them have something very common both of them are advanced modeling and both of them whether they are from different family of course that's the component modeling which is a pro boolean and the other one is edit poly both of them depend significantly on your ability to understand the difference between the modeling as an object level or as a sub object level Anyway, uh, that's the slides again, and that's the results. I wish that you, uh, you find that useful. Thank you very much for watching me, and have a good day.